she said, yeah, I don't like to do it, but I can do it because it saves me an hour and a half you know, going back and forth to work. So there's about a two and a half fold gain in the number of times they go over bridges, go up elevators, and so forth. So this extrapolates to the real world outside this virtual environment. Well, this has been a really big deal. I've been on all kinds, CNN, uh, NBC, it's a show in the United States was very popular called The Jane Polly Show, which I was on. And of course, it went off immediately in, off the air when I was on. But um, nonetheless, it's been a very fun experience because it sort of validates, um, I think, what people do in cognitive behavioral therapy. And they've been extremely receptive. And there have been lots of uh, trials that have said, <clears throat> how does this work in other disorders? And let me just show you some of those. <laughs> that have been coming out since that time. This is work by uh, Mike Owen and, and David Tolan um, looking at panic disorder. And so they have a pretest, and this is the panic severity scale. They have a mid test and a post test, which I think is about five weeks. And then they have a one, one, one month follow up, so the drug is long off board. So they, they probably had five sessions here, I don't quite remember, giving only decycloserine prior to a therapy session, and not, then not at all. There's another one from uh, Stefan Hoffman and Michael Otto. Again, uh, this was with social phobia. Again, there's a gain at five weeks and even a further gain at one month follow-up. So one of the things that we sometimes see, certainly not always, is that once you get these patients sort of over the hump, then they tend to re-experience, um, they keep extinguishing themselves. And that's why I think these measures of relapse in rats are really overstated um, because they never have an opportunity to now go <laughs> drive over a high bridge or finally go back and say, you know, you gave me the wrong change or whatever. So once you get over the hump, I think people re-extinguish themselves because these disorders are not pleasant. And that's the real trick. Um, this is um, obsessive compulsive disorder, a study from Wilhelm, um, uh, and also Kushner was the first one. And again, at five weeks, there's a significant difference. Here, there wasn't any um, obvious uh, greater at one month follow-up. Um, social anxiety disorder, another one from Guisela in Australia. Five weeks, there's a good gain. And here was actually more significant because of smaller variance, I guess. <coughs> and um, there are at least um, five studies in post-traumatic stress syndrome, Barbara Rothbaum, uh, has one. We just applied for a phase three study from the um, Department of Defense because they're finally realizing that people that go to combat have post-traumatic stress syndrome and their VA hospitals are filling up so they're actually very interested in trying to get better treatments for these individuals. And it's a different way to think about combining medication and psychotherapy. Combining SSRs and psychotherapy hasn't really been that effective. Um, we're not trying to reduce the symptoms of anxiety. We're simply trying to improve the learning that we think is inherent in cognitive behavioral therapy. It seems to reduce the overall cost. Uh, we got the, the same gain in two sessions um, as Barbara usually got with eight sessions. And again, we think we get around the issue of tolerance because you only take the medication before the therapy session or now based on those rodent studies, perhaps afterwards, so if you have a good session, you really want to stamp that in with decycloserine. If for whatever reason you have a bad session, you might want to not give it. So nobody has done a clinical study of giving decycloserine right after therapy, but I'd really like to see that because, again, I think the critical time is that extinction, um, uh, sorry, the consolidation phase. There was, in truth, <coughs> one failure by Storch et al. in OCD uh, and they had a few issues in that, but the most important difference was they gave the drug four hours before psychotherapy. And it's possible it didn't, didn't cover the consolidation gradient because they've done another study in, in children with OCD, giving it one hour prior to psychotherapy, and they have some promising uh, results so far. So, um, and the other thing is that all drug companies are working on cognitive enhancers and we and others are finding lots of other targets. So extinction is not simply dependent on the NMDA receptor, but of course lots of uh, downstream intracellular uh, cascades and so forth. And so what I've told you in summary is it's possible to have an executive measure of safety signal in rats and monkeys and humans. Um, people with post-traumatic stress syndrome somewhat selectively don't show this <coughs> safety signal learning. 
And uh, therefore, um, deficits in safety signal learning may be specific to, to PTSD. And if we could find deficits in these monkeys, it could be a reasonable uh, uh, animal model of PTSD in the primate. And finally, decycloserine facilitates fear extinction and also psychotherapy. And if I come to back to the Karolinska again, maybe I can show you how to get rid of fear in this guy. And if I could do that, maybe you'd think it was onto something. So thanks so much. Thank <laughs> you.